It's February 23rd, 2000, and another remarkable event is about to be uncovered by Ariel, Rebecca, and Ali, the Retrospectors. Now, I'm not much of a fashionista, so if you ask me to rank the significant red carpet looks of my lifetime, I would struggle. <laughs> uh, there's that dress worn by Elizabeth Hurley in 1994, and that time that Björk came to the Oscars in 2001 dressed as a swan. Uh, but I would have forgotten, at my peril, the fever triggered on this day in the year 2000 when Jennifer Lopez turned up at the Grammys in what became known as Versace's Jungle Dress, which became instantly the most searched-for thing ever and triggered Google to create Google Images. But just a month before this, Spice Girl Jerry Halliwell had worn this dress to the NRJ Music Awards in France and failed to launch Google Images in doing so. No hysteria ensued. Well, she already had the Union Jack dress in fairness. Mm. Maybe it's one iconic dress per artist. <laughs> it had also been worn by Sandra Bullock, though in red rather than green. So actually it had really been around before J-Lo put it on and turned it into a phenomenon. Uh, but there, there was a moment where she and uh, the actor David Duchovny appeared on stage to present the award for Best R&B Album. Both of them wearing matching palm prints <laughs> yeah. Versace dresses. Well, <laughs> and he says, this is the first time in five or six years that I'm sure nobody is looking at me. Already anticipating something of the frenzy that was going to occur. So well, why was there a frenzy, do you think, Rebecca? Because, you know, J-Lo looks amazing in it, but Jerry Halliwell looks good in it. I've seen the Agreed. picture of her too. Yeah. Was it because... It fits a bit more loosely on Halliwell. Was it because her hair blocks the view of her chest and it is kind of all about showing the chest? Is it that the complexion of J-Lo's skin makes it pop more? I've seen all these theories. Part of it is the fact that the Grammys is an incredibly high-profile event and at the time J-Lo was a very high-profile pop singer and actress. But I think this dress was something that people wanted to spend time looking at and see from multiple angles because it's got an unusual and daring construction, which... To be fair, I think today probably wouldn't raise eyebrows, but at the time it was quite it was quite racy. You've got this plunging neckline that goes all the way down to the navel, and then you've got a bit of a brooch, and then you've got an incredibly short bit in front, mm. and then you've got the chiffon layers. So it looks like it could fall off at any point, which I think is probably part of the interest, especially on the night itself. She said it was held together basically with tip tape and nude coloured swim short material which she wore underneath. But so it was actually sturdier than it looked. But I think part of it was that people just wanted to spend longer looking at it, not just for salacious reasons. The way that she got it apparently was that she had been uh, filming the wedding planner in 2000 and she tried on loads of dresses, didn't like any of them, tried two more and she put on this green dress and everyone just said, that's the one. And she said apparently that she just didn't really care what it looked like. She was just pleased to have a dress to wear to the Grammys, though that story is slightly undercut by the fact that she had tried on 10,000 dresses before she even got to these <laughs> final two that were make or break. So, you know, I, I think that she, she had some awareness that this dress, particularly, I suppose, because of the reaction of the people in the room when she tried it on, was going to be good for her. She seemed baffled. Her comment on the dress was, it was a nice dress. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I had no idea it was going to become such a big deal, was what she said. But what Eric Schmidt <laughs> said at the time was right. it was the most popular search query we had ever seen at Google, but we had no surefire way of getting users exactly what they wanted. J-Lo wearing that dress. Google mm. image search was born. So let's just talk about Google for a moment. So Google obviously was the best web search engine uh, in the year 2000, but it wasn't the most popular and it was only two years old. So mm. it wasn't the biggest company in that space, strange as it seems no. to remember now. There was Yahoo. So for yes. Google to invest time in creating an image search, which was obviously a thing that they were interested in doing, did need a spur. It did need an example of why, yeah. virally, this was the moment to do it. And he's right, of course, that when people type in Jennifer Lopez print dress, they want to see the jungle dress. They don't want to see what you would have got on Google at the time which was an article about Jennifer Lopez's mm. print dress, or bearing in mind that the legacy media hadn't really got clickbait by this point, an article about the Grammys, which might include a photo of the print dress. They just wanted to see the dress. But 
Uh, Kathy Edwards, who was the Director of Engineering and Product for Google Images, said, of course, it wasn't just this moment. We had been thinking about, uh, you know, setting up a sort of image search functionality anyway, but this was the thing that really spurred them to do it. But as you say, Ollie, they weren't a big company at the time. So two people, two, just two people built it. They hired a recent college graduate, uh, Hu Kan Zhu, who uh, as an engineer then partnered with Susan Wojcicki. Who became the CEO of YouTube, didn't she? Yes, exactly. And they they worked together, these two people, to build it and single-handedly almost launched it in July of 2001. Yeah, although with a pretty impressive library of 250 million images at launch. But it goes to show you how young and agile Google still was. It's hard to imagine a product going from very basic ideation to launch in mm. just over a year now. And tech journalists were impressed. Uh, at this rate, wrote Andrew Zippern in the New York Times, how long will it be before you can Google the smell of roses too? Yeah, <laughs> people forget <laughs> the magic that you felt when you first used Google mm. because the way they organised information was so far superior to what anyone else had ever done that it was yeah. literally breathtaking. Although I remember the sort of coming together of Google's various products that are now a suite that makes a lot of sense. And at the time you were like, wait a second. So they're trying to map the entire world and then they're also going to try and do street view where you can go down any street and see it all. And they've also got this sort of translation unit. How is any of this going to fit into a master plan? And of course it really does. Now every single aspect of it is monetized in a way that's making them you know, I intensely wealthy. But also this was an age where most people were still using dial-up internet and most people are still using desktop computers so mm. now you know as we discussed in our episode introducing the blackberry last month the most popular phone handsets now have screen real estate where it makes sense for google image search to be the way to search for certain things when you're having a dinner party conversation mm. do you remember that dress mm. j-lo wore you just hold up the picture on your phone wouldn't you but then right. why would you want that on a desktop it took vision to understand that we'd all have these screens everywhere all the time yeah, the launch of Google Images really is a milestone moment in the shift of the internet from basically being a glorified encyclopedia to what we have now, which is this incredibly visually led internet. If you think about, you know, Instagram, Pinterest, even YouTube, obviously of moving images, that's what the internet is all about now. Although I've got mm. to say the idea that horny dudes in the year 2000, <laughs> we're looking up a photo of a woman in a dress. She's a very beautiful woman, and it's a very stunning dress. But from the 2022 vantage point of endless porn at your fingertips, it seems pretty <laughs> quaint. It's basically, like look, it's basically like the internet version of looking at a catalogue lingerie section. The other profound effect that Google Images had was that it really changed the fashion industry. Suddenly, after this moment, anyone, anytime could see whatever they wanted. And I saw this piece in GQ that said that this allowed the fashion industry itself to really shift its own focus, to indulge its current obsession with nostalgia, which was a huge shift from that previous moment where it was all about what's new and what's next. And now you're able to look back at like any era of Dolce & Gabbana and those brands themselves often referenced those previous seasons to make new seasons and so I think Google Images allowed for that kind of a shift. So I started looking into where is the dress now. Yes me so too. <laughs> you can see if you want an exact replica made by Versace that was donated to the Fashion Museum in Bath albeit I have to say situated on a far less stunning mannequin. I really feel like their mannequin game is weak for the dress that it's holding. <laughs> it's humble. It's still Jenny from the block. <laughs> However, according to my best research, J-Lo herself appears to still own the original, which honestly makes sense because I have kept clothes for years after I stopped wanting to wear them because someone once said I look nice in it. So I can only imagine how it must feel. So the legacy of all this was celebrated by Versace themselves uh, in September 2019 when they launched a whole spring collection based around the dress in exactly the nostalgic way that Arian was alluding to for the 20th anniversary of this moment. Yes, and the catwalk show that featured this dress began with a big projection of Google image search with the text, OK Google, show me the Versace jungle dress. And that was then followed by images of the original look back from 2000. And then came the command, OK Google, show me the real Versace jungle dress. And then out comes J-Lo herself. Wearing the dress she's kept in the cupboard all these years. 
came in handy. Well, actually, they, she was wearing a reimagined version oh, of it of with sort of subtle tweaks and details that's probably also worth another $150 million now. It's <laughs> such a fantastic moment because she looks absolutely fantastic. Yes. She was 50 at the time and it drew an astonishing amount of comment on how good she looked. It was really a triumphant moment. I didn't feel, I didn't come in thinking I had any particular emotions around Jennifer Lopez or the dress. But when you see her come out in it, it is quite exciting. Just brings a tear yeah. to my eye. How well she wears. <laughs> that dress <laughs> <laughs> I mean I think she's done remarkably well to be as sort of hot and famous as she is now as she was then I, I found this from the International Herald Tribune from the year 2000 um, there is no denying that current style and music play to a Latin beat Jennifer Lopez whose voice and dance movements are both red hot has been wooed by Versace <laughs> While Ricky Martin, the teen heartthrob with the velvet voice, is dressed by Armani. (laughs) (laughs) Armani made the wrong call there, didn't they? Yeah. (laughs) Tomorrow. He was such a baller when it came to miracles. On one occasion, he actually had to pray for them to stop. Ditch the ads and get a Sunday episode when you join Club Retrospectors. Subscribe now on Apple Podcasts. Part of the ACAST Creator Network.